Praise God. Did you know that God cares about where you live, your home, your state of life? God cares. Proverbs 3, verse 33 says that God declares over your home that it is joy-filled and favored with blessings because you are, when you are, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Isn't that good? So let's pray into that. Precious Father, we just thank you that you care about our homes, where we live, our life. Father, thank you for that, that you're with us right now. Wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of us speaking to us. Holy Spirit, breathe now on Father God's word. May it find its way into our heart and transform our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, here we go. Ultimate living part one ultimate living. This is for you. This is essential to your life, to your family. Everybody wants to live and not just exist or just kind of scrape by, but to live well, to thrive, to excel, to be fulfilled. We all want that. Ultimate is a word that means the best or the most extreme of its kind, to the utmost. You know, there are magazines, websites, podcasts, media specials, all trying to educate us on ultimate, ultimate answers to living the good life, yet they lack any true evidence of being that authority. Women are told if they just look a certain way, right? Well, that would be ultimate living. But, but says who? Guys are told if they can just make this much money, that would be ultimate living. Young people are told, of, well, if this many people like your social media posts, well, that's ultimate living. Really? Really, is it? Families are sold dreams like, if you could just vacation here, now that would be ultimate living. Students, they're told, if you can just get this degree from this school, ah, welcome to ultimate living. Couples are told, if you can drive this car, if you can have this condo, if you can just have these type, these class of friends, that's ultimate living. Activists believe if their voice is heard and society finally bends to their will, now I've got ultimate living. Really? How about business people fixated on claiming diamond or premier club status? Now I've got ultimate living. I don't think so. Well, what about athletes? If I could just get in that winner circle, one championship away from ultimate living. But is any of this really ultimate living? The money, the fame, the notoriety, the recognition, is that really ultimate living? Let's hear what God says. Psalm 34 verse 12 says, this is a valid God-approved question that we should all be asking. It asks in Psalm 34 verse 12, what man is he who desires life and longs for many days that he may see good other translations say it this way. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? So God even makes it a deal. He's asking about it through his word, telling us this is important. This is a question we should all be asking. You know, Heath Ledger was a famous Hollywood actor with an amazing, successful career, great wealth, unparalleled global admiration, glamour, Academy Award winning. But was it ultimate living? He died at 28 of a drug overdose. Robin Williams, famous, was considered one of the most amazing comedians, actors of his day, a famous, wealthy, a major power player in entertainment. But was he happy? Was he fulfilled? Was he healthy? Was he living the ultimate living life? How about Whitney Houston, the top-selling pop artist, dies in her bathtub from a cocaine overdose. Is that ultimate living? We all know about Bill Cosby. He has this career of ridiculous success and fame, and yet he ends up going to prison for abusing women. Sarah Burke, the famous skier. What about Kobe Bryant, the amazing basketball legend? Amy Winehouse, Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade, Michael Jackson, Steve Jobs, and then there's Harvey Weinstein. All people with fame, wealth, success, who either died too young or wish they died because they played God and made a royal ugly mess of their life. The country artist Jelly Roll has a single out with these lyrics. It says, 
Somebody save me. Save me from myself. I've spent so long living in hell. They say my lifestyle's bad for my health. It's the only thing that seems to help. I'm a lost cause, baby. Don't waste your time on me. I don't know. Is that is that a marriage proposal or is that just a boo-hoo, what you going to do type thing, right? But it's not ultimate living. This world's winner circle has proven over and over that it's far from having ultimate living. The world's trophy room can never fill the place in a person's life that only God can truly satisfy. You were made for God's pleasure, not for stuff, for God's pleasure, for eternity, not for temporary. There's a reason why the Rolling Stones had a hit with, I can't get no satisfaction. How about the Black Eyed Peas singing, Where is the Love? You too had a global success with their famous lyric, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Are you starting to catch on with this theme? What about Linkin Park? They sing the line, let mercy come and wash away what I've done. Everybody, everybody from the poorest to the richest in society are looking for ultimate living. The key, ultimate living. They want the good life, forgiveness, love, satisfaction, something to believe in, someone to believe in, ultimate living. It's not that winning or success is bad. Listen to me, because it's not. But success, fame, wealth, notoriety, all of it becomes a liability if, if it distracts you from the true source of all life. God the Father. Without God, people get proud. They get arrogant. We get self-righteous, fearful, paranoid, isolate. We become our own little weird gods, and then we usually find out way too late that we can't save ourselves. What about people like Bernie Madoff and Jeffrey Epstein? They handled billions of dollars and ended up self-destructing. Does the Bible talk about ultimate living? It sure does. Yes, it does. Only religion would try to hide this truth from you or distort it. Look at 3 John verse 2. One of my faves, it says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as your soul keeps well and prospers. That is a love word from God to you, to your heart. God's saying, I wish you would prosper dynamically, expansively in every area of life and in your body, your mind, your will, emotions, with your joy level, your peace level, and on and on. God's saying that to you right now. Right now, that's his word, his will for your life. The world, on the other hand, has a very flat, narrow view of ultimate living. Scientists may believe that it's the law of the jungle where only the strongest survive. Academics, they hope to find ultimate living in being published, being relevant, having 10 years so I can say whatever pops into my intellect without consequence, and that's freedom. What about investors and CEOs? They might say it's all about money, 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 money. Ultimate living is green, baby. But then, how about the poor and the underprivileged? It might be all about just winning that big lottery ticket. And for lonely people, what's ultimate living? There may be no such thing as ultimate living, just another drink in a bar where somebody knows your name, or maybe it's where nobody knows your name. There was a 25-year-old young woman from Detroit with two little children, very poor, and she won the lottery, one million bucks. Her neighbors, they all said that the 17-year-old was such a nice girl, young, nice person who never got into any trouble growing up until, you guessed it, she won the lottery. And within a year of winning, she was found dead of a drug overdose laying beside her 18-month-old daughter. My friend, that's not ultimate living, and you know that. Proverbs 1 verse 32 says something profound. It says, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them. Did, let me see that, say that again. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. 
Phil Hartman was an internationally famous comedian from Ontario, Canada. He was a star on Saturday Night Live. He won Emmys for his work, starred on The Simpsons. He appeared in several big movies. He had his own sitcom. He has his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. A lot of money, the big house in Southern California. And then he got the beautiful trophy wife. And then suddenly his model trophy wife, actress wife put three bullets in him while he was sleeping. He was 49 years old. Is that ultimate living? Ah, Stephen, why are you taking us down? No, 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 I'm setting you up for the truth. With God's truth, we can dismantle every lie that's holding you back from God's best for your life. We've been told this lie that ultimate living is about the perfect career, the perfect J-O-B, having a big house, marrying the perfect looking person, or the funny life of the party person, or having a lot of money, or having a lot of stuff, lavish vacations in beautiful places. We've been told that it's about having tenure, being published, being respected in your field. We've been told that it's about being athletic and strong, well, think about O.J. Simpson. What about MMA star fighter Victoria Lee, dead at 18? What about the crazy life of Mike Tyson, the short life of Sarah Burke? We've been told that ultimate living is about having fame, even if it's being famous for nothing, right? Or having positional authority. Lots of politicians have position, but many are not liked at all, even tolerated. I have to laugh at alcohol commercials. Everyone is 22, they have a 4% body fat ratio, and they're retired millionaires, right? It's just lies. The reality is so much different than the portrayal. It's not real, it's fake, it's all lies. And we're told those lies over and over and over by the world and the media and society. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says this, there is a way that seems right to a man. There is a way that seems right to a woman, but its end is the way of death. One time I was at a NHL hockey game in Buffalo, New York with my brother and my grandfather. It was close to the end of the game, so I thought before the big rush out of the stadium, I would take the opportunity to visit the facilities, of course. I went past the entrance to the women's restroom and rushed into the next entrance. I was unaware that there were two, yes, two entrances to this particular restroom. Sadly, unfortunately for me, I thought I was in the men's room, but it wasn't. So, oh no, you see? There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is the way that feels like it. I felt like it was death anyway. <laughs> Have I ever got good news for you though? I've got good news for you today about ultimate living. Good news. God, your father has the secret, the mystery to ultimate living, and he wants to share it with you to help you, to guide you, direct you, to grow you, to teach you in the right way because it's his will for your life. He doesn't want you going in the right, the wrong entrance. He wants to put you on the right way. Ultimate living is organic. It's entire. It's not fractured. It's not something that you order in slices. It's whole, entire. Notice the correlation in this verse. Let me read it again, 3 John verse two. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as your soul keeps well and prospers. The whole package correlates. Have you ever heard of people who go to the gym and only work out the upper body? The immediate question is, hey, bro, what happened to leg day, right? <laughs> Life without real living, ultimate living, it's pointless. It's lopsided. It's fractured. You see, many people buy the lie that ultimate living is just bulking up in one area of life. If life is all about feelings, well then alcohol, drugs, promiscuity, thrill seeking, overeating, well that's ultimate living. If life is all about just having stuff, then you can chase the money, the assets, the vacations, the square footage, and the status. If life is all about just control, right? Dominating and control, well then you can micromanage, you can obsess, you can insulate, isolate, manipulate. That's all ultimate living, but it's not. As you pursue a feeling 
or having or controlling. The rest of your life just spirals into chaos. God's version, God's version of ultimate living is entire. It's holistic. It's Jeremiah 29, 11-ish. Let's look at that. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12. God says this about you. He says, for I know the plans and the thought that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Then look at 12. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will will hear your voice and I will listen to you. My, my, my. Did you hear that? God has good plans for you. Plans for welfare, blessing, for peace. God wants to come to you and he wants to listen to you. God wants to hear your heart. He wants to listen to you so that he can help you. Jesus said this in John 10, verse 10. He said, I've come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. Isn't that good news? Understand this. If you believe a lie about God's will for your life, you cannot have God's will for your life. Let me say it again. If you believe a lie about God's will for your life, you cannot receive, you cannot have God's will for your life. That is the exact opposite of ultimate living. Sadly, even Christians, born again Christians, believe these lies. So how can we turn and receive the whole package of ultimate living? That's the question. What's the principle? Well, I'm so glad that you asked me that question. God delivers his good and perfect gifts, born of heaven through and by his word, his promises. God uses principles, precepts, standards, laws of life, all delivered by his word, his promises, his will. Just like there's a law of sin and death, God counters it with the law of life in Christ Jesus. Consider this. All of natural life speaks to a holistic cycle. Your blood, for example, has been cycling through your body, bringing needed oxygen to your cells. And once deoxygenated, the heart pushes the blood back to your lungs to get reoxygenated, loaded up again with life. So think about your lungs for a minute. Your lungs, they pull oxygen in, then they push carbon dioxide out into the atmosphere. This process is called ventilation. Air moves in and then air moves out of your lungs. Now, imagine for a moment if your lungs only brought air in. <laughs> How long would you live, right? We call that holding your breath. Free divers, they become experts at that, able to hold their breath for over 10 minutes, where most of us, we'd be gasping in less than one minute. Pam and I, we had a dear friend, Trent, like a brother to us. He was an amazing free diver, but he drowned in a free diving accident because he wasn't able to get the air out and then back in. You see, we all understand that your lungs must ventilate. They must cycle. They are designed to ventilate air in and then air out. Your lungs are like balloons filled with sponge-like tissue that bring air in and then push air out. Your heart your heart is a muscle that pumps blood out to your body and then it pulls it back to repeat the cycle. Water, water evaporates from the earth into the atmosphere, cools and condenses into some form of precipitation to feed the rivers, the streams, the lakes and the oceans. Over and over and over this loop, this life cycle, it keeps circling. What happens if these cycles stop? Well, it's death. If your lungs only go one way, that's death. If your heart only pumps one way, that's death. Because life is meant to loop, meant to cycle. If the water only evaporates into the atmosphere, but doesn't rain, the land dies, the crops die, the people starve, the nation dies. My friend, when the flow of life stops, when that loop is compromised, everything is compromised and moves toward death. Breathing in, and then breathing out, that's a picture of ultimate living. That's ultimate living. The same way your lungs breathe in and your lungs breathe out, 
You must have every area of your life breathing in and then breathing out, breathing in and then breathing out. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Stephen? Be more specific. Well, here's what I'm saying. Just like your lungs, you are designed for a cycle of receiving and giving, receiving and giving to enjoy ultimate living, period. Plain and simple, yes, that's the way it's supposed to be. Are you talking about money? I'm Look, I'm talking about every part, every fragment of your existence. If you have it, you must work it to experience ultimate living or you spiritually atrophy. Look at this. If you have love, you have to give love. If you have wisdom, you must give wisdom. You got to share it. If you have strength, you've got to share that strength. If you have energy, you've got to invest that energy. If you have faith, you've got to pray for others. If you have a song, you get to sing to inspire and uplift the discouraged. My friend, if you've got blankets, remember the one who is shivering homeless in the night and give a blanket. If you have a car, why don't you help that hardworking single mom get to work? She's struggling. Help her with your car. If you've got children, then you need to invest in your children, your attention. You've got to teach them. You've got to instruct them. You've got to give to your children. If you've got grandchildren, instead of giving them money, give them opportunities, give them recipes, give them chores, give them work assignments that you can watch over and instruct them. My grandfather had to clean out his whole septic system. Guess what? He used that to teach me responsibility and hard work. That was better than money any day. And now that he's gone, gone to be with Jesus, I still pull, I still pull on my grandfather's work ethic in my life and it blesses my life. If you've got experience, then share with the inexperience that will listen and that will show up. And speaking of giving, the greatest giving is forgiving. Let it go, drop it, stop holding debts against others that you would want to be forgiven of yourself. Modify your expectations, my friends. Modify your expectations and what you insist on. If you've been forgiven, then you must, I said you must forgive those who've wronged you. That means quit looking for some kind of payback or compensation. Mark Twain, the amazing author, wrote this one time. He said, forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. That's beautiful. Tyler Perry, the great actor, writer, producer, he said this, it's not an easy journey to get to a place where you forgive people, but it is such a powerful place because it frees you. And Tyler Perry had a very abusive father and had to deal with all that kind of stuff. Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, verse 12. He said, forgive us. He said, pray this way, forgive us as we forgive others. Again, with that third John 2 sense of correlation, you cannot prosper with forgiveness on the inside without having it flowing and moving toward those outside of you, to those around you. You really don't have something that you are not empowered and able to give away. You don't have mercy if you can't give mercy. You don't have money if you can't be generous and give money. You don't have love if you can't give love. You don't have true friendship if you can't be a great friend. It's the bridge concept, which is the essence of a functioning faith. In John 4, Jesus asked the woman at the well for a drink of water. He was activating her faith. A prophet in 1 Kings 17 asked a starving woman for her last bit of bread. He was reviving the cycle of life in her heart. God never asks you for what you don't have, but what you do have so he can get life to you. God asked Abraham for his son Isaac. In turn, Abraham received God's eternal promises. Understand this, God doesn't need your little piece of bread or your little bit of wealth, but he does need access to your life to affect your life, to save your life. And that requires a bridge of trust. Romans 4, 16 says, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith. That's trust, the bridge of trust. There can be no living without giving. 
Ultimate living requires access, and that bridge is on the other side of our ventilating, our breathing out and giving. Too often people wrongly think that God offers salvation through Jesus for nothing. Mm. Yes, grace is an unmerited gift, that means free, but there are still requirements for grace. It's called the bridge of trust, which is faith, and faith has evidence. Jesus offers you and me his life, but it's in exchange for our life. Yes, our broken and sinful life. Just because it doesn't seem equitable or like a fair trade, and just because you feel, you may feel worthless compared to the perfection of Christ, doesn't disqualify the power of you giving him your life. You get all Jesus paid for on the cross when you give him your life. Broken as it is, my friend, it's life for life. Your life for his life your sin for his salvation. But make no mistake, you must give it, let it go, lay it down, surrender, relinquish control. Now that is ultimate living, when you have faith to be giving. Let's pray. You can begin this journey of ultimate living right now with an act of faith, an act of believing, giving your trust to God. God, you can give him your life. Heavenly Father, pray that. I need a Savior. Jesus died on the cross for me, was buried in the grave. He conquered death. After three days and nights, you rose him up from the grave. He reigns as King of kings and Lord of lords. I lay down all my sins. Cleanse me of all of my ways. I give you my life. I receive all of your life, all of me for all of you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.